let's start with firmware fundamentals. So what is uh, firmware? Some people say that firmware is a software that is hard to get. There is some truth in that because typically firmware is built in into some special dedicated storage, uh, which is which is hard to get, hard to, how to interact with it. Like you need some additional um, tools to to interact with it. Some people say it is software considered by users as a part of the hardware. But this is this is very true in the modern computing environment because when you're buying your laptop or when you're buying your PC, you expect uh, it will boot and then you can run your operating system. So that means uh, the, the, the firmware, the BIOS firmware is inside the device and it's an integral part of the device. Um, and that's the expectation of the users. Others say that this is lowest level software, uh, which provides hardware initialization. This is more close to um, our point of view because uh, we're working with firmware to really initialize hardware. So this can be leveraged for security purposes and leveraged by operating system uh, to maximize performance to run some applications. Some people say this is uh, uh, the firmware is just the hardware initialization uh, uh, software, which allows to uh, make it more flexible and compatible. So. Um, thanks to firmware, we can run multiple applications, our applications of choice, as, as in previous case. Um, but why operating system not doing that all that initialization? Uh, but um, it, it is uh, there is a lot of philosophical discussion about that. Uh, people there are some people from uh, Linux boot community and previous uh, Linux BIOS core boot environment where they would like to put Linux in the in the firmware and to not repeat. Uh, writing the drivers twice for once for um, initialization of the platform and second time for the operating system. So do not repeat yourself rule. Um, and but uh, but when we look at the at this effort at Linux BIOS then Core Boot and after that Linux Boot, we see that this is not this is easier to say and harder to do uh, because there is still a lot of uh, obstacles to achieve that state. Uh, there are also some critical parts that shouldn't be done by operating system. So operating system is definitely big code, big code base, which is hard to um, uh, verify, hard to write, hard to maintain, and, and firmware should definitely do a more specific thing and should be smaller. So this is one side of the what is firmware. Um, the other side of the, uh, of the firmware is uh, what it is, where how this is stored, and uh, this is how it differs from other uh, software. So typically, firmware is stored in a separate chip on the main board, typically on um, SPI chip, and access to firmware uh, code is restricted uh, and limited. So, so the attacker who will uh, uh, like to make uh, persistent threat on the platform will not get easy access to uh, to this uh, to this storage they will not have easy access to modify it um, for security and uh, intellectual property protection reasons some platforms uh, may uh, use some built-in firmware uh, firmware built into breast processor uh, we call it boot rom uh, which is uh, rom is a read-only storage, which is internally to the SOC, and, and it execute uh, some most critical firmware and then pass the control to the further stages of the boot. Um, so some people also say that this is the firmware is a program that just the loads operating system and try to call firmware uh, bootloader. So this is uh, probably opinion from some silicon vendors or maybe also from some uh, members of UFI forum. Um, and uh, what about the memory of the firmware? It is typically freed after passing control to bot loader. So whatever memory is used by the software which initializes initialize our hardware is, is then uh, revealed. So it is not blocked by the, um, uh, by the firmware components, although there are some corner cases to that and we may be discuss that later. To boot uh, operating operating system, we have to enable at least uh, some boot devices and provide some support for 
file system because without that the, there is problem of loading the bootloader from some file system like FAT32 or NTFS or, or EXT4. In, pra in practice, uh, we have to do a lot of um, uh, a lot of things to initialize the boot devices and and then also uh, initialized uh, file system drivers. And usually for compatibility and performing uh, and for performing the most critical uh, operations, uh, we want to have um, that code as close to hardware as possible and run as easier as possible. So other way to explain reasoning behind firmware existence is also uh, the path that uh, we get through during the boot process. Um, it is uh, from very hardware specific and constrained environments at the beginning, uh, so which can you, which you can learn in uh, Arc, uh, Arc Architecture 4001, for example. So this is real mode, uh, reset vector area, and then from that mode, we are uh, progressing to more and more sophisticated environment uh, where finally we can run fully, fully uh, featured operating system with a lot of sophisticated features and leverage all this complex hardware uh, that we have uh, behind.